Imagine while taking a break in your study room. You look outside the window to stare at the beautiful nature, trees, and all the greenery. Science tells us that our stress level can reduce just by being around trees and plants. That's nice and all, but what if you see small, dead animals on spikes like a kebab on the branches of those same trees? Now that wouldn't be very stress revealing. Welcome to Top Feed. Hit that subscribe and like button now, and let's find out how loggerhead strikes feast on animals that are their size or sometimes even bigger. What if I tell you this small bird is incomparable to the formidable eagles of the Americas? Would you believe me? Well, you have to, because it's not me who's saying that, it's science. Also known as the butcher bird, the loggerhead strike has evolved in a somewhat cruel manner. Don't let the size and cuteness fool you. Rodents and other small animals fear this bird like nothing else. Well, maybe humans, but that's it. Loggerhead shrikes eat invertebrates during warmer months. Their staple foods during the breeding season include agricultural pests such as grasshoppers, beetles, and rodents. Winter brings a greater reliance on vertebrate prey, such as frogs, turtles, small reptiles, ground squirrels, voles, mice, shrews, and small songbirds, just to name a few. The loggerhead strike can grow up to a maximum height of 10 inches, which is nothing compared to other predatory birds like eagles. So how can this little guy swoop down on its prey like an eagle and catch it even though its beak is not even close to handling bigger animals like lizards, squirrels, etc.? Eagles have strong claws to carry their prey, even if it's heavy, and kill it with their formidable beaks. On the other hand, loggerhead strikes don't have the power to strike and kill with their beak, but it doesn't have to. While evolution didn't give strikes strong beaks, wings, or even claws, nature was nice enough to provide them with spikes. Yes, you heard that right. Strikes have found a much crueler way of killing its prey. If you ever come across a small animal impaled on a spike on a branch of a tree, or a wire, or anywhere a spike can be found, Odds are, it was killed by a shrike. Shrikes might hunt like raptors, but they lack talons to pin their prey down. And when you hunt prey almost as large as yourself, that's a serious drawback. So, shrikes grasp prey in their hooked beaks and fly it to the nearest pointy object like a cactus spike or branch or barbed wire spike. Then, they impale the animal to both immobilize and kill it. If there's nothing spiky at hand, strikes will also wedge prey in the crook of a tree branch. How crazy is that? Did you think this cute bird would be capable of such evil at the start of this video? Our guess is no. After impaling it on a spike, the loggerhead strike can either pick its prey apart bit by bit or leave it for later. These food stores are called pantries or larders and they provide a critical source of food when prey is scarce in winter or when the birds need extra nutrition during the summer breeding season. Another reason for leaving the prey there on a spike is that the animal could be filled with toxins. One of Strike's favorite insects to eat is a grasshopper, and these little guys are full of toxins that can kill the small Strikes if they eat them just like that. And the Strikes know it too, they're not dumb. Leaving the insects out to dry in the sun for a few days allows the toxins to degrade, making them safe to eat. How cool, right? Even scientists are now using sun rays to break down harmful compounds, such as dioxins. These substances appear for a number of reasons, but mainly due to the uncontrolled burning of waste, they end up everywhere, from soil to food, plants, and air. Only recently, scientists have figured out how to use the sun to solve this issue, and it looks like it really works. These little birds have been using this technique for god knows how long, and we are still just getting to know about it. Loggerheads not only use these spikes for food, but they also use them to court the lady loggerheads. Male shrikes make kebabs from several carcasses of lizards, grasshoppers, and other insects to attract female shrikes. It's called larder. This is how gifts work in the animal kingdom. Not so subtle, but again, they're animals without any sense of money or expensive items. Males give what they can get their hands on, and the females still love them for it. Such low maintenance. One thing's for sure, animals sure do love to give, as well as receive, gifts. The male scorpion fly offers mates a heartwarming gift of a ball of protein-rich saliva, because nothing says I love you like your spit. 
males of the species Paratraculaea ornata, a spider from South America, wrap prey in silk and then carry these packages, holding them high in their mouths as offerings to females in the vicinity. Unfortunately, some of these spider bachelors scam their sweethearts by hiding low-value, low-nutrient gifts, such as already consumed prey or vegetation, under the gift wrapping. Douchebaggery knows no species limits, I tell you. But how do shrikes even pick up animals that are almost their own sizes? It has to be a struggle considering the prey must put on some kind of a fight. Well, they have a system for striking the prey. First, the shrike grabs the rodent from behind, clamping down at the base of the neck and pinching the spinal cord to paralyze the animal. Then, the shrike shakes its head back and forth to break the neck. That might sound simple until you learn that back and forth whipping motion generates accelerations of up to 6 g-forces, or roughly the same amount of force felt by passengers on a high g roller coasters or by the drivers in a Formula 1 car. 6 g-force is the maximum force level allowed on roller coasters, otherwise, if it's more than that, everyone would just faint right away. But we still see people blacking out on rides. Why is that? Are they weaker than the rest of us? Well, not really. Blackouts are usually caused by a problem of the regulation of blood pressure, or sometimes with the heart. This condition is known as syncope, and believe it or not, it's pretty common. In fact, up to 40% of the population will lose consciousness at some point in their life due to syncope, according to surveys. Neurologists say that passing out on roller coasters can happen because the g-force of the ride can briefly deprive the brain of blood and oxygen. Some riders can also experience what's known as red outs. The experience of seeing red when blood rushes rapidly to the head. The brain is then low on oxygen and decides to leave every thought behind and take a nap. While that's clear, why is that the human brain has evolved to act like this? Animals' brains do go on hibernation mode like that. In humans, it has to do something with vasovagal syncope. Fainting while seeing blood is a symptom of this condition too. A lot of research has been done on this. You see, in the Paleolithic era, people were always fighting each other. There was always one goal in life. Hunt food and provide it for your family. Sharp objects like spears and arrows were used to injure and kill your enemy. Scientists believe while males learned to fight back, females and children weren't hunters. They didn't know what to do in life-threatening situations, so their body developed a peculiar reaction. At the sight of sharp objects and blood, their brains would come under a lot of stress suddenly, and they would faint. And this survival trick worked as the enemy would just think they're dead and leave them be. This turned into a survival mechanism, and the condition has been passed down ever since then. Animals don't really experience vasovagal syncope, because if they did faint in the wild, the predator would probably just feast on it. Nothing's better than a free, effortless meal, but animals do have another survival ability, tonic immobility. It's a behavior in which animals play dead. It's not the same thing as vasovagal syncope because this technique can be used for multiple reasons. Sometimes, animals also become immobile in the hope to surprise attacking prey when it comes to check up on the dead animal. Playing dead occurs across the animal kingdom, from birds to mammals to fish. Perhaps the most famous death faker is North America's Virginia possum, which opens its mouth, sticks out its tongue, empties its bowels, and excretes foul-smelling fluids to convince the predator it's past the expiration date. Talk about being dramatic. Back to loggerhead strikes. We hope to have changed your mind about these cute looking evil birds, but we can't blame them. Nature is a zero sum game where you either prey or get preyed upon. And that's all for today. Do you know of any other animal that hunts down in a more evil way? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this, please click the like and share buttons and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss more amazing content from Top Feed. See you.